Hey, it's Joseph here. It is all over the news now, Enscape 3.0 has landed. Before, the versioning was 2.6 to 2.7, and then 2.7 to 2.8, 2.8 to 2.9, and so on. But now it is 3.0. A digit before the decimal point has changed, which means it is a major update. So this means there is a lot to cover today, and I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by Enscape. Stress ball that Enscape used to make, which is useful if you want to kind of play around when you are stressed. But I suppose they need to change this since their logo kind of have changed. And I don't know if you have taken a look at their website, but the most apparent thing is the overall branding and colors and the logo. Even this quirky guy, apparently his name is Dr. Photon and he's kind of disappeared off of their website and branding as well. And along with the branding and the logo change, they kind of overhaul their user interface as well. And because the buttons and the icons kind of have changed, they kind of rearrange things in a way it makes a bit more sense. And from what I know, Enscape started in 2015 and they have been rapidly adding very useful features. And it became such a vital tool to some of our designers. Every time they added a feature, it meant that it is another button inside of the user interface or the UI of your design software. Therefore, we kind of ended up with a lot of buttons on the toolbar and it is time for some housekeeping. And that's what they exactly did for version 3.0. If you actually look at SketchUp's toolbar set here, there is now only one toolbar. There used to be Enscape and Enscape Capture toolbar. Now that the Capture toolbar has migrated into Enscape's own render window. So let's go ahead and click this to see the render window. So if we look at the render window side, you can see now there are a few buttons on top left here as well as buttons on the top right. I previously had to switch back and forth between the modeling view and the rendering view just to render up an image or video. But now all that could be done inside of the render window. So I can just maximize this screen and then look around. And then if it is time for taking a screenshot or 360 panoramas, and then the standalones, they can all be accessed through top left here. And let's just go over a couple of buttons that I haven't mentioned. On the top left, you can just click on this home mode or escape key to go on to this mode. And the next one is collaborative annotation C for short. So you can leave different feedback or comments about your model. So you can collaboratively work on a single model with your teammates. And then the next one is the BIM information. If the model has any BIM information that is going to show up here, as well as if you go to the view management F for short. I really like how easy it is to flip through these scenes by just clicking on them. If I were to try and render, I can go click on this button here, either click on the screenshot or batch rendering for rendering multiple scenes, or I can go to 360 button here and then render out mono or stereo panoramas. And then I can either export EXE standalone or web standalone with this button here. And I kind of skipped this one here, but the video editor is available with short key of V. And this dialog will show up on your left. And this is your familiar ground of keyframe editor. And I think this is one of the biggest change since the overall user interface for video editor was kind of foreign to the others. But this way it is a bit more consolidated and intuitive to use. I've actually seen a great tutorial slash blog post about the video editor from my friend Dan Stein. So be sure to check it out and I'll leave a link in the description. Whilst everything on the top left had to do with editing your specific scenes and model, as well as doing different type of renders, on the top right hand corner, it has everything that has to do with the view and navigation settings. So you can click on the minimap buttons or hit M for short. And then you can also turn on the save frame. It's gonna put a black bar on your view so that you can kind of preview what your final output is going to look like in keeping the ratio of your output. And then you can also toggle between perspective view versus two point or orthographic 
type of view. The next button is toggling between the fly mode or the walk mode. Whenever I am approaching the building, I would like to fly into it. But if I want to stay grounded, I just change to the walk mode so I can actually stay on the ground and move around inside the building like that. And the next button is actually VR headset or the VR mode. So you can click on this one to enable your VR headset. And then the next button is going to be the visual settings and then the render window settings. So this one visual settings is going to open up sort of the familiar dialogue. If you were to click on visual settings on your design software, now it actually has a little triangle that's on the left side here. And then once you open open that, you can see the flyout now contains different presets. So you are able to create different type of presets. And you can save all of those visual settings into one so you can kind of toggle between two. This is one of my favorite update as you can tie all of those presets into your view management and the views. So I can assign specific presets to be assigned to a saved view. And once that happens, as you toggle between, you are able to have the same preset that is assigned to your view. And then if you were to click on the gearbox, you can see the render window settings. And then there is a question mark, which is help panel H for short. And whilst it is showing up all the navigation controls here, I can click on this one to show different information about the toolbar or get help and find a bit more information there. Or there's actually another tab that shows up here, which is showing the home mode. Right now it is showing sort of a short information about the walkthrough. However, if I were to go into view management, now it shows different information here so that you are able to read some information that you might have missed. So if you're working with something as complex as a video editor, it is now going to show some of the information that's gonna be even useful for some experienced users. However, if you wanna collapse all of those, you can go to the home mode and then just click on this X to make best use of your screen real estate. And because all of these controls have migrated into render window, which can be unified between different platforms of design software such as SketchUp and Revit, the experience as a designer who's using two different types of software is gonna be much easier transition between two. So very much appreciated. So let's quickly go ahead and take a look on the Revit side. Here, let's look at the Enscape ribbon. Now we can start with the start button. And whilst the model is loading, I also wanted to mention the fact that now the loading time is much reduced since Enscape now supports multi-thread material loading, which means all the multiple cores inside of your CPU can handle different set of work so that the loading time is much quicker. The model is already loaded whilst I am saying that. So let's go ahead and double click right here to jump in. Well, that guy is, is trying to jump in. You can also see that if I go to the BIM mode, B for short, there is a whole lot of items that are going to be listed over here as Enscape assets. And if you want to click on this bedroom wall, it's gonna show me all of these information just like how it used to with the old BIM mode. So the visual is stunning as always. But as you can see, top left is exactly the same. Top right is exactly the same. Only the UI that was different from SketchUp is the design software side. And because of this cohesive user interface, it meant that even the vector works now can do the batch render. So for those of you who are Vectorworks users, you can now render up multiple images much easier than before. And as part of 3.0 update, Enscape now have added 333 more assets. And the Enscape team is calling this as a local assets as they're supposed to be the region specific type of assets. Indigenous trees and shrubs and vehicles and some other objects are added to the list. As they now have total of 2,470 assets, now you can add your own 530 
custom assets to make up for a total of 3,000 assets. And before I wrap up this video, I also wanted to mention that Enscape team has produced a release video about this specific update. Either you can click here or the link in the description where you will find another link for the 14-day trial of Enscape if you haven't tried this already. If you have enjoyed this content, please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to continue watching these type of videos. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I'll see you next time. Bye.